In this video, we'll use the Cinema 4D Field Force object on X particle as a nexus. We'll use this to trace some cool lines around the surface of an object. We'll then render those trails with the transfer of particle color in Redshift. In our scene, we have an X particles emitter and we're emitting the static particles from the surface of this primitive torus. Now we can use Cinema 4D forces as well as all of the uh, Insidium Nexus and X particles tools. For example, let's go to the Cinema 4D simulate menu forces and we can use all of these with X particles. Let's just bring in a look at a tractor and let's just dolly out a bit move our attractor over here hit play and you'll see that our particles are attracted to the attractor and they're tracing these trails look because we have got an xp trail object active let's just deactivate that for now actually and we'll explore the trail a little bit later so we can use all of these cinema 4d forces as well and that's pretty cool because there are some interesting effects that you're able to achieve by using the field force if we bring one of these into our scene and let's just we'll make that torus invisible let's bring in a create field and we'll bring in a random field we'll make this random field about 700 percent scale and in our field force we're going to use the random field as the field to generate our force and we're going to set the velocity type to set absolute velocity and put this on i don't know maybe uh, 50. so now you can see that we've got these vectors that have been drawn and these have been generated by the field force referencing the random field and if we hit play you'll see that they have an effect on our particles fantastic so obviously you can use this to layer up and create custom noises and whatnot. Um, I, I wouldn't, I would use the Nexus Turbulence uh, object to do that because it's GPU for one and you can get some amazingly intricate noises using that. But one effect that we can get from this, which you may have seen before, is really cool. So let's just go to our field force and we're going to delete out that random field. And then we'll just make the field force invisible for now. And we're going to go and we are going to make a volume, volume builder. And the volume builder, we are going to drag in this random field because what we want to do is generate some vectors. Now, by default, it's creating a sign distance field using this. This could be meshed, but we don't want to do that. We want to create uh, vectors. So let's put it on vector. And now we've generated those vectors based on that random field. OK, now what we want to do is uh, we want particles to randomly swirl over the surface of our torus. And there's a really cool trick that we can do in the volume builder to get those vectors to make them move in that way. What we're going to do is get our torus and put it below our random field. And now you can see that it's making these vectors from both the random field and the normals of that torus but we get blend modes and look if we set this random field to the cross product we are going to get something really cool we just need to make one more change with the random field highlighted we need to set the creation space to objects below and now what that has done using a clever bit of maths we have got random vectors but they are always tangential to the surface of our torus. Very cool. Let's do a couple of things. Let's go to our torus and just make the pipe segments uh, more detailed. And then we're going to go to our volume builder and we're going to make it more detailed by putting this voxel size down to maybe two. And then we've got some really, really kind of detailed vectors now. Brilliant. Now, this is the cool trick. We can use this volume builder, these vectors it's generated, to drive our field force. So let's go to our field force, drag in the volume builder. We want it to be a volume object. And let's now make the volume builder invisible and hit play. And yes, our particles are moving and swirling around 
our object. So what we're going to do now is reactivate the X particles trail object, which is referencing the XP emitter, switch this on, and now we're going to be drawing on some trails. And you can really start seeing that nice swirliness. And these are perfectly going over the surface of that torus. So it's a really neat trick. It's a very nice look. And the reason why it's great to be able to do the particle and the trails in X particles nexus is we've got some really cool tools to be able to render the particle color and pass it on into the trail. Let me demonstrate. We're going to bring in an Insidium Nexus NX color object. We're going to set this to gradient by parameter and let's do the direction. So they'll be colored dependent on the direction of travel and then we'll load a preset. Let's just, I don't know, maybe this violet gradient. Now we're not going to see this in the viewport, but you can see, look, our particles are changing color dependent on their direction. Cool. But we can access that data and store it in the trail. So let's go to our XP trail object to the thickness and color tab. And you can see that, look, we have a trail color mode and there's two options per vertex and particle color. So we've discussed these before. Let me show you again, though. Um, let's double click in our material manager to make a redshift material. We'll stick it on our trail. And in that material, let's go to the standard node and we'll scroll down and we're going to give it some emission. We're going to make an additive material here. So let's give it a weight of two. And let's just get our render view going. Hit render. Uh, so there we've got our white trails. Let's make the torus invisible. So now we want that color information. So let's double click. And if we type in vertex, we'll be able to access this vertex attribute node. Because what's happening is X particles is storing that color, storing that color information in the vertices of the trails. And we need to be able to access that. So to get the correct name, we come over to the attribute name and go to the presets, curves, and look, there's a curve color. And now we can pipe this now for our additive material. We want to put this color into the geometry opacity and that with that emission value we put in will give us our additive material. Very cool. So now we have got that. Let's close that down. We could go to our redshift object. If you wanted to, we could have this uh, thicker. And we could look, maybe point those trails down at the tip, something like that. And you can see that uh, because if we go to the trail, color thickness, we're on particle color. So every time those particles change color, the entire trail that they are drawing is going to change color as well. And that's not quite the look we want. We want to paint that color change on over time. So let's change it from trail color mode, from particle color to per vertex. And there, yes, we're getting this drawing on of particle color. Let's go from the beginning and we'll see that in action. So we're painting on those trails and they're changing their color as they change direction very cool and this is something that you're not able to do with the tracer object in cinema 4d so doing it with x particles and nexus gives you this versatility these really cool colored trails